there are a lot of racism within the culture and backgrounds, even though if you're Bangladeshi or Pakistani, within that ethnicity, you get caste uh, hierarchies and racism within that. If you're a certain part of Bangladesh or a certain part of Pakistan, I've seen it, I've faced it. Um, even if I was to go out and if there was a particular uncle or a friend, they would have a joke and banter with me. I'm a Razakar, which means I'm a traitor. Welcome to Together on the Mics with the Shamsuddin's. Today's an exciting episode, episode two. We're going to discuss about the mental health and relationships and also about the relationship challenges. Also, not forgetting what's on fire, it's the Lawson's talk. Zainab? Or Zainab? That's not, some people say it. It's not Zainab or Zaino or Zaino. <laughs> Zaino. It's Zainab. Zainab with a T at the end. With a T. With a t. Don't t. forget the T t-, t-, t at the end. Right. It's very important. <laughs> mental health and relationships, Zainab. Okay, so. Um, you give me mental health right. issues. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a serious topic. I mean, it people is. do. Um, come across a lot of challenging uh, um, <coughs> challenges in their relationship. That's right, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did this, we're doing this podcast um, just to remind the audience, it's purely just to discuss about what we have gone through and what we are going through, and hopefully, it's, it's a helpful topic. Our experiences, to. Our experiences, what we've yeah. been through, yeah. what we've learned from it, and hopefully, it helps others. Yes. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, in our relationship, what do you reckon the mental health, <laughs> apart from being completely mental in some cases? <laughs> um, it's, it's a hot topic in the sense where there's a lot of changes happening in the last few years from the pandemic. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of um, separations from our own friends and family and just in general the the whole divorce rate and the separation rate has gone up dramatically um what we see on social media and um and other platforms are just not they're just not genuine um yeah i'll just but then i guess it's why why has why do we think the divorce rate or separation rate has gone up Mm -hmm. and why is it different for us i think the people tend to get quite shocked that we've been together for as long as we have and that i think i think it's an easy i I remember you saying to me on a few things um the easiest option is to say uh no or yes in a relationship not to find a solution it's a bit like business as well but going back to relationship um the easiest answer is no or finish yeah i think i I think as well, probably now life has changed in the sense of social media, um, friendship circles, whatever it might be. There's a lot of pressure. It's pressure, 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 but I think people have started to expect too much from relationships. Um, They see a fantasy or they have a fantasy relationship in their mind. It's the whole and TikTok, if it's um, you know, when you see a Just TikTok everything, feed, yeah. because I think people on social media, you tend to just share the best aspects of your relationship. Yeah, right, yeah. So when you're on holiday, it's all the perfect photos or date nights and everything always looks like it's a dream. Mm-hmm. There's no issues, there's no problems. Um and that's not reality. But I think people look at it and think, well, my relationship's not like that. So I should have that and I deserve that. Yeah. And if I'm not having that, then I'm going to leave. But I think you need to accept that what you see on social media isn't reality to the full extent. It's a yeah. dressed up version of it. I think people have moved on in a sense where if, if, you, if you said this, if you mentioned this maybe a few years ago, okay, but now people have understood yeah. it's just a social diary. Yeah. It's not their true outing or their But date. it puts pressure yeah. on you. I and think it also puts pressure on the peers, the friends, yeah. what their mum and dad would think, what their, uh, what their friends would think on, on, on a date night. Um, but it puts pressure on you to feel like you, you should have that dream holiday or yeah. the dream relationship or the perfect house. Um, yeah, and true. perfect doesn't exist. And I, I mean, think I th- that's good to remember. Perfect doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, we've had some plans for this year. We have to cancel. Um, purely, well, hopefully not. 
<laughs> I'm just being realistic. There's some challenges coming our way, um, and it's just been yeah. But but it's just these things where you have to take responsibility, and um, yeah. Just and I think as well for us to, we've always actually been, even though we're doing a podcast, when we've had problems uh, as a couple, <coughs> relationship or work, we try to just resolve it between us two and not include external parties, especially for me. I think I try not to include parents or in-laws or friends into the mix because... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, it's just this thing I, I'm just imagining. What happens when we have an argument? I My <laughs> my hearing aid, I can't find my hearing aid anywhere or I lose concentration and then I... Then so, you know, <laughs> I just don't register. I just go shut down mode. I don't know how to help that. Maybe if you guys <laughs> want to direct me or want how but to it's, be. But that's that's the whole <laughs> thing. So you do go into shutdown mode. Mm. And actually, years ago when we would argue, I remember I would always go hello like that to you, and then you would hate it. And now I've learned that you hate that, and I know that you go into shutdown mode. So I kind of leave you to come back to me a week later when you've absorbed the information and processed it and then talk. So it's learning how to adapt with each other and understand that if I want an instant answer from you, I'm not going to get that. Yeah, yeah. And I have to accept that that's the person you are. Okay. Um, um, I just wanted to mention uh, Pete in the background. Oh. He is a happier, <laughs> happier f- puffer movie fish. And Again, him, nobody the cares. Moving, the vitality, <laughs> the tail, and vitality. <laughs> the, the whole. He has a few shrimps a day with few muscles. And look at him. Look, what a beauty. So maybe uh, to all the ladies out there, if you're having problems, just get your partner a puffer fish because it clearly seems to make them smile, and it's the the solution. <laughs> so maybe that's the answer. We all need a puffer fish in the relationship. <laughs> uh, w- <laughs> We were discussing this behind the scene before going live or recorded, whatever metaphor wants to say. Um, it's metaphor we media. Meta- metaphor, <laughs> metaphor media. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo fire! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you like that? <laughs> Someone's, someone's really happy in the yeah, background right yeah. now, but we'll, we'll, we've done we've yeah. done a shout out. So, <laughs> okay, so. Um, there's we what we discussed discuss. is about um, different background marriages, and um, in the community, I've had a few people approach me when they have marriages from different backgrounds. No, they seem be specific. Use, so yeah, they seem to use me as some sort of embassy for <laughs> something, <laughs> or, or some sort of ambassador. Ambassador, but, uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. So <laughs> I've got an embassy, and I'm an ambassador of a certain. You know, um, you can I, if, say because I don't want to say it because no, it's gonna... because it explains then why. <laughs> so Rahul's from Bangladesh uh, heritage, and my heritage and family is from Pakistan, and traditionally that's a <laughs> not a good mix. They don't tend to merge together. So, so, <laughs> well, well, they do and they don't. I mean, um, I they don't do want to go now. too deeply into it, but the reality of it is, um, some. There are a lot of racism within the culture and backgrounds, even though if you're Bangladeshi or Pakistani, within that ethnicity you get caste uh, hierarchies and racism within that. If you're a certain part of Bangladesh or a certain part of Pakistan, I've seen it, I've faced it. Um, Even if I was to go out and if there was a particular uncle or a friend, they would have a joke and banter with me, I'm a Razakar, which means I'm a traitor. Um, which I think is disgusting. Um, some of them I do just kindly just sort of educate them, say, look, be very weary of how to put someone in that position. Um, my um, relationship with uh, Zena had nothing to do with politics. And, and that's it. The people who gave us the blessing gave us a blessing and prayers ongoing. So um, even though you're from a different background, a different caste, um, let's focus on why is the relationship together? Why are you in harmony? Um, but I yeah. think it's 
don't just look at what's different about each other and actually <clears throat> look at the similarities and how you are in harmony. So cultural background might be different for us two, but our religious background is the same and we we're both raised well by our parents. So we've got a good relationship because we've got a good foundation and understanding. Yeah, it's a bit but like the one umma, isn't easy. it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You're that supposed to be a, a one umma, um, a one umma, one... One, yeah. yeah, but even the differences shouldn't be an issue. No. And I think we've had a hard and long journey to get to where we are. It still is. Um, it and is it still, still is. And we still I see still it. I still get those re remarks and I'm like so bored of it. Um, but either. you're bored, but then as painful of a thing as it is to say, it is, then you see the impact on our children and I think, I, me personally, I probably took comments that weren't fair, but I'm stronger in that sense and I would just brush it aside. But when things get said about children because of a mix, it's not right it's not and not nice, fair. No. Um, I mean, and we've got all sorts of called, uh, well, the kids do, in, indirectly. Um, they've been called cocktails, they've been called... Uh, worse. <laughs> we'll just say they've been called worse. You could have a here. Banglai kau nak ni gue deh. Banglai mati ni naik gue. You have to explain so, what yeah. is that? Um, subtitle it. <laughs> subtitle. Yeah, yeah. Can't be asked. It's a thing of. Ibu banglai sini gue deh. Banglai kau. Okay, and from that aggression, you can stop. Stop. So that's it. We get <laughs> we get spoken to in a language that isn't our native language. And isn't going to be a language that I can speak. Well, hold on. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that for is right. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as a mum raising... the other raising, side, go to Lahore and they just give you a feast of fish. <laughs> what the hell, man? They just give you a feast of no, fish. No, we gave you meat and chicken as well. The Bengali demand is here. He loves fish. You know, fish for but breakfast. But then that's lunch, love, breakfast. isn't it? So that's the that whole point, yeah, actually. That that I think what we a thing we fish. found... We yeah, and the balance is actually different. That yeah. For me, I'm still seen as, I laugh and joke and say, I feel like uh, it's that illegal alien. And I'm still looked at at functions as if I'm still something so different. Um, and now our children, I think, feel the same. And rather than welcoming us and embracing us, it's made us feel more alienated. Whereas for you, I truly believe my family, some of them, like you more than me. And if we were ever not together, I feel like I wouldn't get invited to functions because they'd want to invite you. So it's a difference of how it is. Um, and it's still a difficult subject for us. It is very difficult. I mean, it's emotional as well. Uh, we're in this outside where we're the nucleus family. We've made a family and that's it. So people outside like to comment on certain things that are quite hurtful and so on. It's going to happen everywhere in most mixed marriages, not just us. But um, what we've been through and what we're going through uh, stems from the war, 1971, um, East Pakistan and West Pakistan. As you guys already know the separation, um, there are still, from my dad's time and my, and my dad and my uncles, they still experience the war like I'm sure your um, grandfathers did and, and so on. They did, um, but I think from our side, <coughs> my family side, it wasn't so much of a thing. Yeah, I think if it, I think for Pakistanis, it's maybe a Pakistan India thing, is probably the one that we have the probably harder understanding with. But for your side, it was definitely difficult for you to be marrying a Pakistani. I think it still is difficult for some of them. Um, because of what you're saying, because of the war. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole graphic image that's in their mind, and that's the hatred. The war itself is a big no anyway. Um, you know, totally against that with any country. I mean, war is, is a crime. In, um, but how our relationship and other relationships um, equal to this mixed marriages is... There is that story there, that behind there, and how do we deal with it? We don't focus on it. Um, 
we just listen to what people have to say. If they want to banter or make some comments, we just... <laughs> I think... But it does hurt. I it think we yeah. now, after 19 years of being married, we're now able to maybe laugh it off a little bit. The kids but do, yeah. The kids do, but don't. They get upset by mm. some comments. Um, it's hard anyway when you're born in the UK, growing up in the UK. You, It's not as easy to speak other languages. Um, and then ours speak predominantly, well, only speak English, actually. Yeah. Um, they understand. Uh, they understand. Or do, or do, or do. They can probably say a few things. They kind of understand Bengali, but they can't speak. And that seems to be a common thing that it's, they don't speak Bengali or they don't this or they don't that. And I feel it's always about what we don't do or what we don't know, rather than us as a family, we try to celebrate the differences. So we teach, overall, we're both Muslim and we've raised our children as Muslim and they understand the religious aspects cultural things there's a lot of cultural things that conflict with our religion so we've tried not to educate our children on those things um but we try to get them to be proud of the fact that they're british they're bengali they're pakistani um celebrate yeah yeah. so we want people to do the same that actually being from different backgrounds a good thing it exposes us to more experiences, more culture, more food, more traditions. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you're you right. I mean, it, when somebody uh, says a negative comment, do you know what? I just turn that into food <laughs> and I turn it into uh, the positives. Um, and I don't think about the negatives. I have to. I have to adapt. Um, but how does it make you feel? Because I know for me as a mum, you instantly becomes a mother bear, emotional don't say anything about my child and it you become very protective of your child when anything's said by anyone but for you i think the comments don't really come from my side of the family so how does it make you feel when i think at times where no comment is or no response is the response i think i go with that yeah strategy and um but how it, does it make you feel it doesn't make me f- it, it, it upsets me it ups- upsets me um I don't know how deep I can go into this in a podcast, but even from going to the local mosque, we're in the stigma, oh, it's a Nigerian mosque. It's a Bengali mosque or a Pakistani mosque. And actually, if we're honest, it's been um, something we argued about very recently in Ramadan because our... Argued. It was argued. This is how we argue now. So now our old... Our debate. old arguments would have been it's a debate. crazy level rage. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a, this is my opinion, that's your opinion. And actually we probably never get to an answer because we don't have the time <laughs> to get to a look, solution. But Like it or not, if you are a bit educated or if, you, if you've got the know-how, sorry, I shouldn't say educated, but if you've got the know-how, um, being British is one, you're celebrating different backgrounds and ethnic ethnicities well, that you are UK, British UK is good for that that yeah. we, it celebrates a lot of exactly. ethnicities cultures food diversity is a good thing here. but we are one we are British so I just look at it like that in mentally if someone gives a derogatory or a you know or a comment I just look at it we no, are but like one. I was saying you said about the mosque thing so in Ramadan uh, unfortunately there is a bit of a label with the two main <coughs> mosques here and within the communities they're kind of classed as pakistani mosque and bengali mosque i'll be i'll be having a um you'll be in trouble later i'll be having iftari at um one of the mosques and if there's a pakistani person goes by no uh, but for us it actually became a thing where our children have family in both mosques at the end of the day yeah they've got a granddad sitting in one mosque and a granddad sitting... Actually, the granddad wasn't here over Ramadan from your side, the dada. Yeah. But it was... Do we always take them to the mosque that you've predominantly been at? Or do we take them to the mosque that I grew up going to? And we wanted them to be exposed to both. And it was a touchy subject for both of us. Because you've got 
connections and loyalty and memories with one mosque and I have no, it with I, another. I, I do have it in the Gainsborough. But you wouldn't mosque. come to Gainsborough Mosque no, with us. I, 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 <laughs> no, um, I do go there. When? Um, it's just the, the facility of... You know, my facility and my convenience. That's why, you know, I park the vehicle. I mean, they're literally the one car, road park, away from the other. <laughs> I park the car, Shamsin in court. And so the argument we was having was if your but wife... I have and parked there and I did walk to the... I don't remember To the that. West Road Mosque. Yeah. I, I have. When? Um, I do remember. It was last year. I did... <laughs> You're avoiding putting a time and date because it doesn't happen. But this, these are the things that we encounter that... If me and the children are going to one mosque... Pops, he actually goes to where, you know, he he goes But that's what it should be. That's the mentality. No, but what you can understand is um, I was... I'm one of the directors of of that mosque and Mm -hmm. administrative things, I have to be there. Announcements, Mm -hmm. we know it's not just my decision, it's everybody else's. But then Um, my point on that was actually as the director of one particular mosque... You more than anyone should do the mix of both mosques because you should start to educate the community, multiple communities, that a mosque is for Muslims to pray, not for a cultural group to pray. So if you, as the director of one mosque, chooses to go and sit in the other mosque and pray, they might be like, "Oh, actually, we can." So that's the point no, of being in the park. No, 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 no. Okay. And in the, in, in the park, there's yeah. a lot of integration of the other mosques. Uh, Which the, is really a nice yeah. occasion. So it does happen. Only on that day. No, it happens because behind the scene, you've got other fellow directors who are in the mosque. They link with them. It's just I know, but I'm not married to the other ones. So I'm married to <laughs> you. And I was trying to get you to come comfortably to the other one. But this, these are the whole things that there are still some sticky points with. <laughs> Uh, different ethnicity marriage, isn't there? Yes, <laughs> and it always will be. Um, yes, yes, there is, and um, we should. I should look into this a bit more deeply. Offset into and what coming in, to the other mosque? No, but I do though. When there's times, I do go. When I go, <laughs> that's such a lame answer. There was no actual answer. (laughs) You should go to politics. Lordson's, whatever it would be called, party. Lordson's party. I will go into politics um, in 10 years' time. In the UK or in Bangladesh? I don't know, but I will do it in 10 years' time. I don't think I'll do it in the UK. I'm not coming with you if it's in Bangladesh, so good luck. (laughs) Hey, viewers, what do you think? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on is uh, we want to talk about the the Lordson's talk. Or we were still five. itching to let it out. Yeah, from the last <laughs> episode. Um, yeah, so. No, but before you do your big reveal, <laughs> mm-hmm. then I guess it's well, how are we both at Lordson's together? What brought us to Lordson's? Rather than boom, this is the surprise because I know you can't wait to let the surprise out. Trust. Um, it came to a point where I didn't, and I still don't trust people. Um, if you want my honesty, um, I'm going through this journey of trusting the right people at the right time. Made some errors, and uh, yeah. So my Zena sole partner is at Lordson's, and um, she's heading up a team, and it's quite exciting. The reveal, I will reveal right now. No! <laughs> when am I supposed to do that this? That reveal, wait. Oh, okay. So, we want to talk a bit more? So, I'll exp- say more right. on what you said okay. on the trust side. Is, I think, as a husband and wife, no one's going to look after you more in a joint business Even than... Even girlfriend, boyfriends or fiancés, you know, it's not just... Even siblings or relative, yeah. but you have a... End Siblings goal, and you both yeah. have the same mutual yeah. interest. So, if you've got a business partner that you can fully trust, yesterday I went to a listing. They've yes. been a partner for forty years. No issues. I've. I was quite. I feel really inspired. What by partner this. are they? 
As it, it's not husband and wife. No, it's a business partnership. It's a business partnership. But they have two different... Are they related? No, they're or not they're related. Okay. They're actually friends. And yeah. they're different personality. But they've got so much respect for each other. But I think yeah. the thing is, when you're running your own business, mm. um, it's hard to have people you can trust and people who are just as motivated <coughs> as yourself to make it work. Yeah. So I think for us two... It is for happy and sad days. They have to be exactly. both in it together. It's not just for the the happy times. It's the sad times as well. Yeah, and then we both got a mutual interest in wanting to make Lawtons and the brand work. Yes, because it is our livelihood. It's what we survive on, um, and we're hoping that it's something our children can be proud of. Not necessarily working, although you want them to. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. I mean, it's something that we're going to work towards. Together, I'm really impressed how the team are working well together. Yeah, Lawson's. we've got a really good really team. Good team. Um, a team we can trust, and that's the whole point, that it's been a hard journey, but we know we can trust each other at least. Um, and I think there wouldn't have been a better option of who to work with for me as well, because I know you've got my interest at heart, so whatever you're doing with Lordsons or work, it's for our benefit, for our home, um, and then vice versa. And it's also providing a service in this domain, in this property sector. You know, when I made a comment earlier on about how other agents or competitors ruin it for certain things and for certain percentages, and I have to be blunt and honest, um, it's in every industry sector, not just yeah, of course, estate yeah, agency. Yeah. Competitors out there really ruin um what you're there for so coming from a restaurateur background um hospitality i like to put you know provide the service first show what we're about um we've got very good recommendations and yeah we get good but good too leads. nice yeah. too nice for our own good sometimes yes, is the point yes, i think yes. but um so how we ended up here you've been doing lordson's for quite a while i have been from my laptop genuinely i have been, i'm not just saying it, it's not a story I work from home remember, before yeah. work from home was even a thing <laughs> that's right yeah. um i was on my laptop um then i had to find out what voip was then i got my own landline um what is voip uh voice <laughs> over internet okay metaphor what, what, what is it <laughs> voip B-O-I-P, whatever it is, yeah. So it's a telephone <laughs> so over you didn't internet. learn no. what it was, anyway. So I, did, um, I had one of those, um, done it from my laptop, uh, had clients come around the house. Yeah, remember? I so, remember. Yeah. Um, the thing is, we, we are having a, well, I'm having a discussion with myself thinking, 2023, do we need a physical office or do we go full online? Because we started off as a hybrid online estate agency. Well, you started that way. Well, I started that yeah. way. And um, some of it makes sense because of, you know, soaring prices, overheads of uh, business rates. Um, I feel at the right time, you're not getting the right support for certain businesses, especially where we are. We are on the high street, bang in the middle, and the business rates are so high. Um, but yeah. then my counter argument was... Um, as a mum and woman of the house, if I was working from home, I would <coughs> probably find it too hard to not then start cooking and cleaning and tidying up as well. I will find a way. No, I you will won't. find a way as a solution. So that is a mental health, what works better for yeah. a female for me is I remove myself from the home environment and I don't need to think about that part of my life. When I'm at work, I focus on work and I make sure I get everything I need to do done. And then when I go home, I then start that part of my life. But sure. to merge the two together for me is, it, I know it won't work. The only way it works for me is to shut off home life and crack on with work. Okay. And then cracking on with work has led to something very positive, which you've been itching to say. So I'll let you say, because you're so excited. <laughs> Finally, the reveal. The reveal. You Am don't tap the table, okay. it's not oh, allowed, no. but you can do an air drum roll. <laughs> How do I do that? Just do it in the air. Like that. But you make the sounds. <laughs> How do I do it? That's terrible. <laughs> there you go. What was... <laughs> okay, that's still bad. <laughs> Remix. Bismillah. Okay. Um, okay, so... The reveal. <clears throat> 
Oh, don't do it like that. Uh, <laughs> don't touch me. Right. Daniel's hand. Oh, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> the reveal. Um, proud to announce that. It's actually probably already out there by the time this goes live. So you're doing enough. such a. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are going overseas. There will be a Lord since Dubai. And um, not there will be. We oh, oh, are there listing are. properties in Dubai, off market opportunities, oh, yeah, and villas in yep. Dubai. We've got <laughs> yeah. So I'm a bit overwhelmed mentally. Um, and has it been exhausted. too much for you? It's been too much. I mean, I'm I'm quite impressed how Zena and team have brought this on to um, the whole light because I was sort of researching it last year. Didn't really, you know, and Zena was reaching a, a research in this from when we were 20, 21, that she wanted to relocate to Dubai. Um, but it's Not just for property. I wanted to property. move just, in the work I did. The work, yeah. And then we had our son instead. That's so <laughs> yeah. Dubai didn't happen. Yeah. But what great that did. Well, uh, yes. <gasps> yeah, great. Fantastic. He's working. Yes. Next yeah. time, I'm going to say this clear into the awesome. camera. Be quiet so I can get it to him. You know, last night when Bubba was in the shower and we we don't we don't know who yeah, turned who the light off. Who was it? Do it again after that comment. Oh, Turn the light off again. I would literally come out and I've never flatten heard you. you. I would flatten you. By sitting on him. No, in oh. other ways, I can flatten him. By sitting on him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why you guys. Anyway, uh, they why we were why we play. There was no shower gel. There was no. There was nothing in there. Anyway, I mean, it was funny though because we were downstairs. I've never heard you shout so loud in my life to come and put the light on upstairs. Who was it? I can't say. No, who who would do that? Who would what? You know, turn off. Why? Why would you do that while I'm in the toilet? Maybe we have, just having a shower. I don't know. I'm a, it's, you're asking a mum to so, snitch on her child will never happen. Lawson's Dubai. Yep. Um, <laughs> Team Zena have got properties in Dubai off plan. Multiple. Multiple luxury property in Dubai. And yeah, it's going to go live within a week. I, I think, think it yeah. should probably be live by the time this is live already. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, inshallah. That's um, just based on my work rate because it's there ready <laughs> it's just if i can get it up on online in time <laughs> you you guys probably thinking why dubai um it's again to the whole truth is uk what i touched on last episode the growth is in there in the next few years we are here as a business um and we're trying what we can and dubai has got an opportunity it's got record sales at the moment even now and we found an opportunity. Zena found property developers, owners, and brokers who are committed and who wants to join and um, join the Lordsons Group. Really, yeah. I think it's we felt it's oversaturated here, yeah. and however much we're trying to set ourselves apart from the other competition, it's just not happening. I think Let it, me we're get just this right. seen as competition. We work well with comp. They are yes. our friends. So yes. we have other agents. So we try to always work in harmony with other yes. agents and respect the business and each it's other. It's just the economy, how it is at the moment, the high um, interest rates. Um, and it was always there at the back of my mind. We've also got an opportunity for um, overseas in Spain, Lords in Spain. Um, but we're focusing on we're Dubai focusing for on now. Dubai for now. But Dubai property market, from what research we've done, is booming at the moment. Yeah. They've had... The record-breaking quarter one, best That's ever. Right. So, um, um, the brokers in Dubai have confirmed in the last five years. Some I spoke to, they said it, they haven't seen a record like this in the last eighteen years. So, it but says we're something. still working in the UK. Yeah. We're just going to do both together. We're going to do both together, um, yeah. and just see how it goes. But Lord since Dubai, Lord since <laughs> Dubai, finally. How do you feel better now? You've let it out. Yeah, I do feel better. Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. I, do, I, I do feel better. But there's a lot of work that goes around this in the background. Um, we've had quite a few meetings, and yeah, um, but nothing comes easy. But the work is worth it if it's going to bring new opportunities. It's going to bring 
yeah, it's going to bring a lot of opportunities. The return on investment at the moment seems to be better and healthier in Dubai. Um, so like an average of around your eight, yield, eight percent net yeah. ROI. That's it. So definitely, it was worth moving over to, and hopefully, it's something that makes us a little bit different from everybody else. It keeps yeah. us busy. Keeps us busy. We're still an estate agent in the UK. And also going to sell overseas in Dubai. Lord says Dubai, here we come. And um, I would say we're going to, we've come to an end of Have episode we? two. Oh, okay. Episode, uh, episode <laughs> three, uh, <laughs> there will be some discussions on end of sales and new leads. Is that what you want to discuss in episode three? <laughs> you just, well, you can ask what they would want us to talk about. Yeah, um, comment. Um, comment and um, discuss about online what do you want us to talk about the first episode was quite overwhelming thank you for your support and kind words <laughs> it was really good actually I didn't know it was going to be like that be I think good. most people have said it's nice yeah. to see how us <laughs> two actually are on on camera and for people to see how we are um, rather than just talking about property or just talking That's about it. business so it's oh. Pete in the background. All right, guys, um, we haven't rehearsed this and we've only been given a bullet point by Metaphor Media. So we haven't rehearsed it. We just Are you getting a kickback today from Metaphor Media? Yeah. No, tw- twice? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the, if we will continue. There'll be more podcasts coming your way. It's coming yeah. at you. Oh, wow. That was so loud. With guests, what kind of people would... They Others like to see on the show the our children because, to be honest, m- I love when me and the boys are together and we just lay into you and pick on you. No, it's not about that. Is why? It? It's such know. good what, times. What, no, but why? He's going to come out with some silly Who's stuff. Who's he? Isn't? Why are you pinpointing one particular child? Because <laughs> I know which one you're thinking of as well. Or four of them. No, it's she be doesn't messy. speak much yet, so, but as <laughs> soon as she does, she'll pick on you as well. Yeah. Kian's nice to you. <laughs> Yeah, Kian's nice. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I just put Kian on your side of the room and Dean and Zaki can sit with me and we just, everyone can see how we pick on you. Be careful today if you go to shower and the lights go off. <laughs> you guys must be thinking why I kept on using the comment fire because we have a couple of um, YouTubers that I follow and they keep on saying fire, it's fire, y'all. Yeah. Fire, fire. What were YouTubers that say that? I don't want to say it. Okay. I, to. I don't yeah. like any of the stuff any of you that watch on YouTube. Okay. I just like this one. This episode. Oh, Plus. really? <laughs> Not you. Just this podcast, Together on the Mic. I don't like you. <laughs> I think the branding is awesome. Together on the Mic. Who did the, the branding? Because I think you might I need to say it. El Sharawi Productions, Metaphor <laughs> Media. <laughs> Metaphor, metaphor, media. What yeah, was it again? Uh, Say it slowly and nicely. They might not have heard you. Together on the mic with, with the Shamsuddin's. <laughs> Is that the dance with the name? <laughs> no, I think that's a quite, it's a really powerful name, Together on the Mic. With yeah, the I like that, actually. Yeah, it's good. It was a good shout by, yeah, good by shout. Metaphor Media. Put up, put up. <laughs> it's been quite touching, episode two. It has been. We have touched on some emotional notes. And we will be coming at you on episode three. Thank you. Oh, you have to do the uh, silly bye thing that Metaphor Media wants you to do. The we out. <laughs> that oh, we was out. it. We out. We are out. Hold on. Silence, s'il vous plaît. That's terrible. Never make that face. <laughs> Thank you for oh, you're still watching going. our podcast. <laughs> I hope it's been entertaining and useful. See you on the third episode. Episode three. Episode three.